Welcome back. Looking and feeling your best is why so many have turned to plastic surgery. The what ifs definitely crossed your mind, right? Your safety is top priority, and that's why in today's Trusted Advisor segment, Plastic Surgery Associates wants to ease your mind about breast implant associated illness and recent concerns over the COVID vaccine and how it affects facial fillers. <laughs> So I'm Doug Vanderwood. I'm one of the plastic surgeons here at Plastic Surgery Associates. I've been here for over 20 years. So breast implant associated illnesses are a little bit of a hot topic right now. It's kind of been um, gaining ground in terms of uh, you know a number of people talking about it and things like that. And it's gotten to the point where it's really uh, heating up in the social media world. It is, however, a difficult topic to really get your arms around because it doesn't really have any clear boundaries. It's basically um, a collection of people, I guess you would say, who have breast implants and they have a variety of symptoms that they think may be related to their implants. Um, but the, the symptoms reported are uh, a wide range of symptoms, and they're not real specific symptoms. I mean, there are people that have some soreness related to the implant itself, that does occasionally happen, but the vast majority of people who are in this, this group and that are talking about this are talking about things like uh, tiredness, sleep disturbance, headaches, joint aches, um, uh, muscle fatigue, you know, things like that. There's always been a low level concern that there could be some problem with silicone implants and the effect on the immune system, things like that. Uh, no scientific study has ever shown that to be the case and implants have been around since the 1970s. This isn't like a new thing that we're experiencing here. So, um, you know, I guess it remains to be seen exactly what, uh, you know, is going on with this new collection of people who are talking about if it's, you know, a real thing. I mean, there are studies that have started now through our, our aesthetic society has been, you know, pretty much spearheading this in terms of looking at it from a scientific point of view, uh, looking at people who have had symptoms, had their implants removed to see if they, you know, how many of those people get better, is, is their improvement sustained. Breast implant associated ALCL is a real, actual, definable problem. It is, uh, a process where the, a certain type of implant causes a low level inflammation around the uh, implant and over time that can actually even develop into a cancer and that's what the ALCL part is. That diagnosis has been around for a few years but now it's quite clear that it's specifically related to certain implants with a textured surface. So implants traditionally have come in different versions. Some of them have a smooth silicone rubber surface on the outside and some of them ha had a textured surface almost like a super fine, almost like a velour kind of surface so that the implants won't move around, which is important to be have, for example, like a teardrop shape implant, it's, you know, thicker on one side, thinner on the other side. You want it to stay in position. You don't want it to go sideways. So they had a textured surface. Well, those implants in particular are associated with this problem. It's still a rare problem if you have those kind of implants, but if you have smooth implants, which the vast majority of people do, uh, you are at essentially no risk for that problem. So those texture implants have now been taken off the market. They're not available. The issue is uh, facial fillers specifically. So now we're not talking about Botox, which is different. That, that stops muscle from moving and you know helps with your wrinkles. What we're talking about are um, facial fillers, which are uh, compounds that we put into the tissue to add volume. And a common place to put them would be in the lips or in these lines on either side of the mouth, that sort of thing. So those are facial fillers. Uh, been around for many years, very safe. Um, those have uh, had a possible association with the COVID vaccine, and that's been kind of the, the news item, I guess you would say. A few people that have had the COVID vaccine, a very few people who have had the COVID vaccine have had swelling in their lips, for example. Uh, there's been some suspicion that maybe it's because they had fillers, but that's really not well documented. It has not been a major health issue for them. Nobody's been in the hospital or anything like that. It's been a fairly, uh, relatively small problem, I guess you would say, and it's been a very small number of people on the order of three in the entire country, so it's quite rare. When you think of plastic surgery or cosmetic surgery, you think of all those cosmetic operations, and we do all of those operations here. Uh, breast augmentation, as we mentioned before, with implants, 
uh, tummy tucks, facelifts, rhinoplasty, which is the nose, eyelid lifts, liposuction, all those things we do. And those are popular procedures, they're very safe. Um, and been going on for many years here. But there's a whole other side to the world of plastic surgery. We also do reconstructive procedures in plastic surgery as well. Uh, people who've had breast cancer, people who have skin cancer problems, people who have been accidents or injuries, scars, things like that. And those things generally fall under more the traditional side of medicine. Those are actually medical problems and they are covered by medical insurance by and large. Plastic surgery has been going on a long time now. It's, you know, a couple generations, I guess you'd say, right? And this practice even, been here over 30 years, I mean, we've had 60,000 procedures or something like that. I guess I can't remember right off the top of my head, but it's a large number anyway. And our, in our, you know, rate of problems is extremely, extremely low. Uh, so you couldn't find a better place to have an operation. And um, it's a lot more private and a lot more uh, attentive than a hospital setting, for example. So great place to be. If you have questions, you know, the, the thing to do is come come and talk to us. I mean, basically a standard consultation is, a, is the scenario you'd find yourself in. It would be, you know, the patient and doctor one-on-one -on -one and talking about what you're concerned about. We could tell you what your options are. You can find out about what things cost and, uh, you know, what the recovery is like, all those kind of things. And a lot of that, you know, you, you're not going to be able to find all of that online. You'll be able to you know, educate yourself somewhat online to get a general idea what these things are involved in, but until you know specifically what's recommended for you, you don't really know, you know, what you're dealing with. So we do encourage you to come on in and, and go over it. And obviously there's no obligation. You just, you know, learn about it and go from there. Am Plastic Surgery Associates is located in the Amway Grand Plaza Hotel in downtown Grand Rapids. For more information, you can visit their website at psa-gr.com or give them a call 616-451-4500.